Um, yeah, welcome to my talk. My name is Franziska and I'm going to be talking about Solidity in 2022, um, mainly focusing on the new features, like recently introduced features. Recently, you will learn quite quickly for me means in the last year, um, but since some people missed some uh, quite interesting and cool features, I'm just going to uh, summarize some of them. And then the second part, I'm going to touch a little bit on uh, features that we are currently discussing that are in the language design process and where we are yeah, in discussions with the ecosystem and with our core team to basically uh, design it in, in the best possible way. And I'm going to basically give you some insights into how we usually do that. And then as the last point for today, I'm basically going to touch on how do we actually do language design. So first of all, what, what is language design? I think it's a, uh, a phrase that we as the Solidity team or in other language team, they use it quite frequently, but I can also imagine that people that don't uh, develop compilers every day <laughs> have the question, hey, what do they mean with language design and what is that and uh, how can I as a Solidity developer or as an interested person or maybe as a C++ developer, how can you get um, started with contributing to Solidity and to yeah, help us shape the language. So that's what I have in store for you today and um, yeah I work in the Solidity team and I'm with the Ethereum Foundation. So no actually I'm gonna go around back before I do this I want to get you guys uh, get to know you a little better so I'm gonna have two questions. Question number one very easy who of you knows what Solidity is? Show of hands. Okay very good. Then I don't have to start from the very beginning and this talk will be relevant for you. And then the second question, who of you um, uses Solidity either in their daily work or also in personal projects or has at least uh, coded one smart contract using Solidity? Show of heads. Perfect. Okay, so this talk is relevant. Yay. <laughs> because I was a little afraid that maybe uh, some newcomers are here, w which are also totally welcome. But since we're talking about language design and new features, I think uh, the more you have used Solidity in the past, the more this will feel relevant and interesting for you. So yeah, uh, since you guys all know what Solidity is, I think there's no need to uh, to repeat what Solidity is, but I'm going to do it anyways, because um, I think that's relevant later for the language design part. So Solidity is a statically typed curly braces programming language designed for developing smart contracts that run on Ethereum. And yeah, today we're going to take a look at how Solidity developed and uh, w what language design is. So basically Solidity is still considered a relatively young language, which means it got introduced in the last uh, less than 10 years. And yeah, for, so for languages that is really young. So as a product you might think, wow, uh, six years or seven years or eight years of age is quite old. But actually when you develop a compiler and a language which it's, it's quite young. And I want to um, put this into relation. So I think the most popular language at the moment that is the new kid on the block, so to say, is Rust, right? So everybody thinks, okay, Rust is a fairly new language, but actually Rust uh, got taken up on and basically officially released by Mozilla in 2010, but it was um, started as a personal project from a guy who was also working at Mozilla before in 2006. So Rust is already almost 20 years old, uh, while, okay, not yet 20 years old, but definitely 15 years old. And Solidity uh, got initially proposed and then also where we started to work on in 2014. So Solidity is even younger than Rust, uh, which means it's uh, quite the new language. And that's relevant because it's um, basically the younger a programming language is, the faster it changes. And this is one thing that basically in the Solidity development we have uh, issues or Inter uh, conflicts of interest sometimes because of course developers and the tooling ecosystem and the security auditors, so everything that basically shapes an ecosystem around a language, they would uh, want to have a very stable language that doesn't change much. So that uh, for tools and for devs and for security best practices, it's easy to follow up and you don't need to do updates that uh, frequently. But it's basically a clash of interests because this language is still young and if you uh, have for 
example, use Solidity in 2015 or 2016, and you will now use a version um, that got released, let's say, last week, you will not recognize it anymore. That is like the basically the extent to which it's changed necessary change for security, for usability, and also because the entire ecosystem uh, around Ethereum was basically evolving at the same time. Huh? So we're basically not only developing the language, you know, that we also develop Ethereum at the same time. We have EIPs all the time. We have network upgrades. Uh, we have new uh, tools coming and new security uh, auditors, best, best practices, um, auditing tools. All of these things basically evolve at the same time. So we're basically in the air, flying an airplane, change, exchanging all the parts at the same time. <laughs> And yeah, so basically what means advancing at a rapid speed? Uh, at, on our website we still say we aim for a regular, which means non-breaking release every two to three weeks, with a, uh, approximately two breaking releases per year. But actually I would say it's not as frequent anymore. I would roughly say we have one release per month non-breaking and a breaking release once per year, more or less. So the last breaking release, version 0.8.0, uh, actually happened um, on the very end of 2020. So it's been definitely more than a year that we did a breaking release. And um, yeah, that is relevant again for tools, etc. Once you do breaking releases, everything, the whole ecosystem again needs to follow up on the changes. Um, yeah, there it says, last breaking release, uh, December 2020, I could have also just read that. <laughs> and last regular release uh, was just last week. Um, version 0814. Yeah, and what I want to convey to you in this talk is basically you, as in you as a Solidity developer, you can actively shape Solidity by providing your input, participating in the language design. Um, we are still a language that is very much open for feedback, for feature requests, for change requests, etc. just because we still have this release rhythm which is quite frequent. So yeah, let's have a look at some recently introduced features you might find interesting, and I hope that you didn't miss all of them. Uh, yeah, before I go into this, um, the biggest change in 080 was that we introduced a save math by default. So basically, from um, using version 0.8.0 onwards, you don't have to um, import a save math library anymore to do underflow and overflow checks, and you can uh, use you can add unchecked blocks by using the unchecked keyword, but all of this you can find on our blog as well. And now uh, on more detailed uh, features that we introduced uh, throughout the 0.8 uh, version series. First of all, the custom errors. Um, yeah, in, in version 0.8.4, we added custom structured errors. Um, I also added like QR codes on all of the following features because basically all of this is explained on our blog. Um, and I hope that these QR codes work and will lead you to uh, the relevant blog post. Uh, yeah, custom errors provide a very convenient and gas efficient way to explain to users why an operation failed. And um, they are defined using the error statement, which can be used inside and outside of contracts, including interfaces and libraries. Then we also introduced in version 0.8.8 uh, user-defined value types. I think that was also quite a popular feature. Um, that means you can create zero-cost abstractions over an elementary value type that also increases type safety and improves readability overall. Um, yeah, if you're interested in the syntax, you can read it there. And uh, again, they can be defined inside or outside. Then one very relevant and interesting thing um, we also shipped together with uh, version 0.8.11 was we added the first implementation of a language server. And since we were like super excited when we announced this to the community, we realized not many people actually know what a language server is. So we also try to basically do the educational part as well and uh, explain what benefit this brings. So I think uh, the language server initiative and protocol was launched by Microsoft at some point. 
point, and it's an initiative to allow for better interoperability between IDEs and compilers. Um, the idea is basically that you, instead of writing a different plugin for each combination of uh, language and IDE, every IDE implements a single client and every compiler in implements a single server, and then you can plug and play them together however you want without needing to write another plugin. And uh, that is great because now every IDE, every like popular IDE that there is out there that has language server support can support Solidity out of the box without the need for all these Solidity plugins. Um, this very limited first release was shipped with 0.8.11 uh, and now um, we are basically continuously over the time adding more and more functionality. So it got initially shipped with with um, errors and warnings, and uh, then we defined the things that we want to work next on, which was jump to definition, rename, find all references, show documentation on hover, semantic highlighting, and more. And yeah, if you're interested in this, you can check out the blog post that's also linked there, which also includes um, different manuals on how to plug in the language Solidity language server into the IDEs that support um, language server protocol. Yeah, also a very, very popular thing that I think not many people realize because compiler development is complicated and I think it's for us sometimes hard to break down and uh, focus on the actual uh, impact on the user, the Yule IR pipeline um, via IR. So that was shipped with one of our recent releases, 0813, and um, that basically uh, considered that the um, Yule IR pipeline is now uh, production ready and can be used. The Yule IR pipeline has been developed over uh, several months, if not years. It was a huge project and can basically now be used um, by you guys. Uh, you can enable this new pipeline by using the via IR command line switch or by uh, changing it in the settings. And uh, the, the best part about this, or the most relevant part for probably you, is that uh, the Yule optimizer, which is used in this new pipeline, can move stack variables to memory and thus avoid in many, 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 many cases the stack to deep issue. So this was one of the most annoying issues that developers told us about in the language survey and we hope that with this new um, yeah, pipeline we can help you guys avoid this in the future. And um, yeah, in order to do this safely, you need to let the compiler know that the memory slots uh, are not used by inline assembly and basically you have to mark them as memory safe. All of this is again explained in the blog post that's linked here. Um, yeah, if you weren't aware of any of these new features, then I think it's time to either follow us on GitHub, on the blog, on Twitter, on Mastodon, or checking uh, release announcements on the forum, because uh, all of these are different means how you can stay up to date with the Solidity development. Okay, so next up, let's take a sneak peek into the future, what's, what's coming next, and I'm going to give you a big disclaimer because I'm actually the only person on the Solidity team that is not a C++ developer, so whatever I say now here comes without any guarantees on the technical uh, accuracy, um, and I actually stole some of these bullet points here from uh, Chris, my colleague. So we're working on two things, and why I will mention these to you is basically because those are examples of features or or functionalities that are currently under discussion and where we are in the phase of uh, defining, um, okay, so how, if we want to implement this, how does the implementation look like in detail? And this usually gets quite interesting in terms of language design discussion. Um, the first one is standard library, which basically came out of another language design discussion we had for a longer time now. Devs were requesting either floating point support or fixed point math. Um, it's the same thing, more or less, so two different words. And uh, we were uh, ideating and discussing around, okay, how could we implement this best? Um, there are many, many implementation details to discuss when you talk about this feature. And eventually, I think the team decided to now explore a different way, which um, is more going via the standard library route. And that means that uh, the main goal being, um, we want to um, yeah, put basically as little magic in the compiler 
as possible and have as much uh, external, uh, yeah, externally facing as possible. Um, an example for that being the fixed point type implementation. Um, and yeah, what we want to achieve with this is make built-in functions importable and implement them in a solidity in line assembly. That means uh, as a benefit, no cluttering of global namespace and ability to look up the behavior. And uh, that should not be confused with another thing that you could also call standard library, which would be more like uh, a token a standard for token implementations or for other things like, for example, the Open Zeppelin library. And yeah, here's an example of how that could look like. So, for example, you could say import the standard math, and then this would be um, the output you would receive here. So that would also basically add a lot of benefit for the user to understand more of the compiler internals. That leads us to another big thing that was requested uh, many times, generics. Um, and yeah, having generics would also be very useful for the standard library um, and also for user-defined types. Um, that could lead to powerful type checking instead of pseudo-generics using uh, uint. And this is a topic that, for example, still needs much more research, uh, but we were basically comparing it with Rust generics and they look good from an implementation perspective, so we will uh, dive deeper in there. So I have five minutes left to run through the process of how language design uh, looks like in Solidity and how does the process currently work. So as you know, Solidity is open source, uh, completely transparent, and if you wanted to, you could follow the entire development process, including discussions on our chat, because even the chat is open <laughs> uh, with us. And that means you can uh, look at the issues, look at the PRs, look at the development chat, uh, look at the forum. Um, literally everything is, is open source for us. And uh, that also means that if uh, retrospectively you want to understand why a fe feature came to be in the way that it is now implemented, it's quite easy to also just go to the Solidity repository, uh, search for that keyword, and basically learn all about the history. Um, yeah, for that all code is on GitHub, and um, the development convo is happening on Matrix. And so how does the Solidity language design process usually work? Um, all of this is, again, also transparently available in our documentation at docs.soliditylang.org slash resources, uh, slash en slash latest slash resources. Um, and yeah, this is usually how it starts. So if you have input, if you want to request a feature, or if the Solidity team has an idea for a feature but doesn't yet know how to properly implement this, we will post a post on the language design forum. And anybody of you could also post on the language design forum. If you, for example, don't like a certain implementation of a feature, or if you need a new feature, this is the first place to go. Go to the forum, post there, and have a discussion around this. And as soon as things get a little bit more detailed, we move over to GitHub, uh, where we then discuss either in an issue um, and then further along the way also probably in a PR, how the implementation details of that feature or that change that got requested can look like. And uh, then we, of course, it's always very hard to get input from the community because the Solidity power users of DeFi protocols or other very popular applications are, of course, very busy. And so it's hard if I try to approach them and tell them, hey, please let us know your feedback and post it in the forum. They will say, yeah, I'm going to do it. And then they will forget about it again. So uh, over the years, we tried many different engagement rhythms or, or models how I, we can actually get the meaningful feedback that will help us shape the language, one of which is the Solidity Developer Survey, which we host once per year, which is your um, opportunity to give us feedback, uh, to rank uh, the priority of possible new features that we're looking at, but also to let us know what you love the most, hate the most, all kinds of feedback. Then I also conducted a quite big round of power users feedback deep dive interviews in 2021 with um, yeah, the most uh, used and known uh, protocols and uh, basically their main developers. And luckily almost everybody was open for chatting with me from um, Uniswap to, uh, I don't even remember, SushiSwap, uh, uh, Austin Griffith, uh, Gitcoin, Fe Team, um, Open Zeppelin. So basically all the who is who from blockchain or from Ethereum gave us input on how the language should be shaped in future. 
Then we also host the underhanded contest, which is yet another way for us to uh, get collect feedback here more in the terms of security feedback. So that is used to uncover language design faults and battle test recently introduced language features and restrictions. Um, we also host this once per year to once every two years. And then um, also a thing that we try to do regularly is the Solidity Summit. It's usually a one or two day gathering online or in person. The last one happened in Amsterdam um, two months, uh, one month ago. And um, yeah, there we get together, uh, share our updates on the language, but it's also great to, once you have all the Solidity developers in one room, get feedback from them and use their feedback to implement it in the upcoming uh, Solidity versions. Yeah, and then once basically we are at the point where we want to implement a feature, um, you can follow all the steps of the implementation in the Solidity project board. So yet again, that's on GitHub. And uh, it's like a usual Kanban board with a couple of more columns <laughs> where you can really see, uh, is this item currently blocked? Is it, for example, in the design backlog? That means that it will be discussed in our weekly language design meeting where we uh, specify all implementation details and clarify verify all questions developers have, or is it already in, I don't know, further down the road and uh, ready for review? Yeah, that's basically also a good time to mention our core team. Uh, we have an amazing team of developers who are very dedicatedly working on improving the compiler and language further and further and further. These are their names, and yeah, big shout out to them. And yeah, uh, we are always eager to learn new ways how we can better involve your feedback, better gain your feedback, better feel your pulse on uh, what new features or changes might be relevant for you because you are the users and uh, what you have to say is critical for us. So please don't hesitate to share your ideas either with me or um, with the team in all of the ways that I mentioned before. And last but not least, uh, I want to use this as a quick shout out for our newly launched um, translations effort. So a couple of people from the community reached out to me and said that they wanted to translate the Solidity documentation and we're trying to foster and basically help uh, streamline this process and so we created this new GitHub organization where we help them uh, coordinate and currently we have teams already actively working on Indonesian, French, Russian, Persian, Chinese, Japanese, Korean and also I think a group is looking for help in Polish, Polish. Um, and new languages can be added no problem. The only uh, condition is basically that you have a team of maximum two people so that you can have a proper review flow uh, and yeah if you speak a second language and if you're interested in translating technical documentations uh, I think that would mean a lot for us because it helps us reach even more users in their native language. And if that's interesting to you, please join us at github.com uh, slash solidity dash docs. And that's it. Thank you. Let's keep in touch. I think the easiest way is Twitter, uh, Franzi Hai or Solidity Lang. Time for questions? Okay, yeah, so if you guys have questions, please um, scream them and I will repeat them with the mic, <laughs> shout them. Any question? Yeah, I see somebody in the back, please just shout. That is a technical question which I'm not <laughs> sure I can fully answer, but as soon as I know both custom errors and custom types are um, not completely developed yet, uh, there's just some niche things that still need uh, to be added. And some of them also rely on the other things that are still in our development pipeline. Um, but I think it's, uh, it's possible to use it as is right now, but probably not with the full suite of ideas. Any more questions? I don't see you, unfortunately, because it's very bright. <laughs> yeah? Okay, thank you.